Cold tonight with more spring snow on the way. This is video from our Corey Repenhagen in Arvada earlier today. You see the snow falling, the trees blooming. It's not piling up. We got to a whopping 37 degrees for a high in Denver today. That is the coldest April 18th in more than a decade. And what a change from the 70s we saw yesterday. This was the view from Horsetooth Reservoir up near Fort Collins earlier tonight, socked in by clouds. And a live look now at I-25 near Colorado Boulevard. And Kathy, the roads are a little, a little slippy tonight. A little sli that's right, Kyle. People are telling me that there is areas of freezing fog and freezing drizzle along with the rain and snow showers. The headline is this might be the last snow of the season for Denver, but it's not going to happen tonight. It'll be tomorrow night. We're seeing the snow start to fill in along the front range on the backside of a storm that came in yesterday. This Friday storm, we have accumulating snow in for you for Saturday morning. The temperatures are really something. They've been holding in the 30s all day. We're just above the freezing mark in Denver here. 40s to the south, the mildest temperatures out across the western slope. 24 hour temperature. We went from the mid 70s yesterday to the mid 30s today. 30 to 40 degree temperature drop and still extremely cold in southeastern Colorado as that snow begins to fill in along hills and west of I-25. But again, it is the second storm that we're tracking for tomorrow that will bring the accumulating snow. You'll wake up to cloud cover and fog, some afternoon rain showers mixing with snow. It's this time tomorrow night we're going to see the rain flip over and we could have a band of snow that drops quick inch or two of snow before moving out midday on Saturday. Saturday will not be a warm day, but we'll see a major pattern shift after that system leaves on Saturday. Accumulating snow, part of your Saturday forecast. We'll talk much more about this in detail coming up. Tonight, the FAA is investigating reports of what United Airlines calls an unauthorized person on the flight deck on a recent Colorado Rockies charter flight. They say it happened last week on a flight from Denver to Toronto. An unconfirmed video floating around on social media appears to show a member of the Rockies coaching staff in one of the pilot's seats while the plane was flying. A statement from United reads in part, we're deeply disturbed by what we see in that video, which appears to show an unauthorized person in the flight deck at cruise altitude while autopilot was engaged. They went on to call it a clear violation of their safety and operational policies. United says those pilots have been withheld from service while the investigation continues. We're coming to learn that XL Energy's preemptive power shutoffs during the recent windstorm could have been catastrophic for Boulder on a couple of levels. Nine News reporter Ria Jean is live in Boulder. And Ria, the company's CEO defended the shutoffs before city council tonight. At tonight's Boulder City Council meeting, we heard from Robert Kenny, the CEO of XL Colorado. He fielded jabs and questions from city council members who were asking how Excel allowed this to happen and more, to, more importantly, how they move forward. City council members and people at the meeting wanted a commitment that this will never happen again. They asked for critical infrastructure analysis, better outage mapping, and 48 to 72 hours warning before an outage. Kenny said tonight Excel will be creating a new wildfire mitigation plan with better communication and a plan for for customers that rely on medical equipment. But for some people, though, it's a little too late. One woman called into city council tonight to say her mom is on hospice and the outage shut down the equipment, keeping her mother alive. This is just so unacceptable. I, I just can't believe that there wasn't any prior warning. Um, thank goodness my mom is still here. <laughs> but this was very, very stressful, and I do not think that it is fair to to let our vulnerable people suffer and, and be afraid. And this is not an excuse, but an explanation. It was the first time that we were applying this mitigation. We want it to be thoughtful. We want it to be deliberate, and we wanted to make sure that we were making the right decision. City Council members also asked Kenny to accept feedback before that wildfire mitigation plan was finalized. Local leaders also presented a study that showed that local businesses suffered a $1.3 million loss in revenue due to those outages. Reporting live in Boulder, Rhea Ja, 9 News. Thanks, Rhea. The main route through central Colorado is closed right now with no idea of when it's going to reopen. Highway 50 west of Gunnison is shut down indefinitely because of a, a bridge that isn't safe. It's 
one of the bridges over Blue Mesa Reservoir between Gunnison and Montrose. Tonight, CDOT says the bridge is cracking, so they had to close it to traffic right away. With Highway 50 closed, the only way to get from Gunnison to Montrose and vice versa is detouring hours north to I-70 in Vail or hours south to Highway 160 through Pagosa Springs. Today, the couple connected to the funeral home in Penrose pleaded not guilty in a Denver courtroom. And this time, it's related to more than a dozen charges connected to fraud. The couple is accused of pocketing nearly $900,000 in pandemic relief funds from the federal government. The Halfords, Carrie and John, were initially arrested on charges of improperly storing 190 bodies in their home, Penrose Funeral Home. Federal prosecutors argued today that they're a flight risk because of evidence that showed they had a plan to avoid their initial charges by traveling out of state. That judge decided today Carrie can be released. She'll be assigned to a halfway house next week. John Halford will stay in federal custody. The governor signed a bill into law today giving additional funding to Colorado schools that enrolled new migrant students after count day in October when funding is traditionally set. The Department of Education will distribute around $24 million from the state's education fund to school districts. Denver, which has received thousands of migrant students since October, is going to get the largest share of that funding. We now know that thousands of students in Colorado will not be sitting for standardized tests this year thanks to a new state policy. It is exemptions for those students who arrived after October. As 9 News reporter Rachel Krause shows us, that means thousands of migrant kids in Denver won't be tested. See? At Monroe Elementary. How many steps do you think you should work? Javier Ramirez has found a way to get his fifth grade students excited about math. <laughs> okay, Gira, muy bien, Gira. Not an easy task, considering his class is filled with new to country students. 33 students in my class, yes. <laughs> Many of them moved with their families to Denver in recent months. And as soon as we see a new student, we just want them to feel um, welcome and part of our classroom. Ramirez says after kids arrive, they can determine a student's learning level and tailor their lessons. But CMAS testing makes this time of the year stressful. For everyone pretty much. <laughs> Ramirez says he's grateful to hear the state say many of these migrant children won't have to sit for those standardized tests this year. They just got here and they're learning about language. Um, system, the school district and the system, the educational system um, structures and now also testing. I think that was a really, really good decision not to have them doing it. It really has given us a little bit of breathing room. Adrian Endries with the district says nearly 4,000 kids have joined DPS since the start of the year. That means hundreds, if not thousands of kids could sit out these tests. Yeah, I mean, it's huge, right? And imagine you've come on a long journey to be here. You're new to the language. You've had a long gap in schooling and you have to take this assessment that is content you haven't learned in a language you don't yet know. That can be really traumatic and, and it's it's not the kind of assessment that's going to give us a lot of information about what a student really does or doesn't know. Um, and an experience that's not fun for anyone. Luckily, this decision was made. So yeah, that, I think that is a release and a relief, not just for a student, but also for um, parents that are just joining our community. Ramirez says this exemption ensures these kids can stay focused on learning instead of trying to prove what they know on a test. So yeah, I think that's something that is um, gonna help them a lot just to adjust and adapt, adapt to this um, new normal for them. DPS says they are constantly gathering information and assessing where these migrant children are at. So the CMAS tests aren't likely to have told the district anything new. And because the kids joined DPS after October, the scores wouldn't have helped or hurt the district anyway. But it will benefit these kids. Rachel Krause, 9 News. Thanks, Rachel. Wildlife officials say at least one wolf killed four calves this week in Grand County. CPW says they were among the 10 wolves reintroduced to Colorado in December, but they won't say which wolves. In total, that makes six confirmed livestock killed by wolves so far this year. Ranchers are getting frustrated. The Middle Park Stock Growers Association sent a letter to CPW asking them to kill the wolves that killed the livestock. CPW will reimburse ranchers who apply for damages caused by wolves up to $15,000. The only psychiatric hospital in western Colorado is at risk of closing. The CEO of West Springs Hospital in Grand Junction says their finances are uncertain. West Springs offers inpatient and emergency psychiatric services for 10 counties in northwest Colorado. 
We have previously reported on issues at that hospital. Top leaders resigned back in 2022 following investigation that found the hospital had failed to properly account for state and federal tax dollars. The current CEO, John Sheehan, says their situation is dire because they've been spending so much on audits for the last two years. You're so focused on getting the auditors what they need that day, right? So that the cost not only for the state to do those audits, but the cost to us to do those audits, I would venture is, is north of $20 million in expense at this point, right? And this hospital is now in full compliance. So, so that was a big drain. The hospital is asking for additional funding from the state, more than $6 million worth. Late tonight, Israel carried out a strike inside Iran. CNN reports that the targets were not nuclear. NBC News is reporting that the U.S. was not involved in this Israeli strike, though the U.S. was notified ahead of time. Iranian outlets have been reporting that flights in several of the country's airports are now suspended, as there have been reports of explosions in a variety of cities. This comes after Iran's unprecedented missile and drone attack on Israel. This is a developing story with news coming out of Iran with updates. You can find them on 9news.com.